Amen. That's awesome. So we're, we're in good with that one. That video is going to change a lot of lives. I promise you that. All right. End time posture. Let's deal with these things. Matthew 10 and 16. Jesus is speaking of the end times. And this correlates. No matter what you believe. Preacherism, futurism, historism, all the different things. It's still Jesus speaking to his people and preparing them for in the end times and how people will behave. So all of this is relevant to us even now. Matthew 10 and 16 starts out, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of what? Wolves. Wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Not harmful as serpents, but wise as serpents. Amen? Amen. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils. They will scourge you, which is to flog or beat you, in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Okay, so if we were to bring this into our time, those governors and kings would basically represent our governors and in a lot of cases, our employers. We're being brought before our employers. Yeah. For a testimony against them. And you have to testify to get your religious exemption or whatever they're trying to do. And we have to stand before them. But this is all relevant to us right now. In this hour, we as believers are required to be wise and harmless. Look at somebody and say, wise and harmless. You can't be a believer and be harmful to people. There's a way to handle everything if you handle it through the Holy Ghost. There is a way. I don't care if you came up in the hood and that's just what we do, Pastor. You need to change that. There is no ghetto in heaven. There's no hood in heaven. There's no bouncing in palace and Monte Carlos in heaven. The streets will go. You ain't tan up the street with that raggedy hoopty. So we as believers, we're required to be wise, but harmless concerning our faith. This is a call for prudence in order to be approachable and manageable by our authorities. Prudence. Prudence. It takes maturity to be a prudent person. Proverbs 14 and 15. The the simple believeth every word, don't they? Oh, let it be some hot, juicy gossip. They're going to believe every word. Yeah, as long as it takes the attention off of them. And how ratchet they are. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. You know what? I'm going to read the definition of prudent because somebody's looking like. Okay, so the Webster's definition of prudent is acting with or showing care and thought for the future. This is so important. So that means your actions, no matter how emotional you get, angry, whatever, you're still thinking about the future. I don't want to mess this up because this is going to mess up the future. I'm not going to go off on this person and fight with this person because I have to see them Sunday. Sunday is the future. I'm not going to chase my cousin with a... chicken knife because there's going to be a wedding, a funeral or something and I'm going to have to sit in there with them is there such thing as a chicken knife I meant to say kitchen but I'm hungry so I put two, two things together there. but you don't want your, you don't want to mess up the future I'm not going to get mad at this guy and go off and cuss him out because he's my boss. I won't have a job. And then when I try to use him to refer me to another job, guess what he's going to say? 
You know, I'm not going to put a whole bunch of creepy, stupid stuff on my social media. I'm not going to be talking about people and going off and because my boss has access to that page too. My church, my family. See, if you're prudent, you're thinking about those things. How can I represent Christ in the best way? Without harming my own future. We were just talking in the back with the band members and they were talking about a dude that, you know, left the church eight years ago. And one of our musicians said, whenever he runs into him, he runs into him at least once a year because they kind of work the same job. Whenever he sees him, he brings it up. Man, that church, man. Eight years. But I remember him. He wasn't prudent. He didn't think about the lasting effects it would have since you relocated your whole family from another state. So let's try to work this out. Let's reason like the Bible says. Don't get mad and make an emotional decision. Make a prudent decision. Amen? That's important. We do not conform to the world or compromise in any way. That's not what I'm saying. We don't conform. We don't compromise. When I went on Jason's show, I told him up front, bro, can I preach the gospel? Yes, preach the gospel. Okay. You're not asking me any questions and deleting the gospel. So every chance I got, I went to the word. He even wrote down scriptures. Now, what was that scripture? Because I, I, <laughs> I'm not compromising and I'm not conforming. But we must make sure our temperament is godly. Amen. Most of the time, Jesus walked around, didn't say anything until they asked him a question. <laughs> he was that secure in being the son of God. And they would try to trip him up in a question and Jesus was, okay, yeah, now it's time for me to reveal who I am. But yeah, so you have to make sure your temperament is godly and we are not weaponizing our beliefs because of our own deficits and personal failures yeah. I have these young guys they'll email me man you, I love your message and different things but man you gotta go on and call this market this, this vaccine the market of beast man I'm telling you it's the market of the beast man you need to go I was like brother I know people that have taken it and love the Lord Amen. so I don't know what the end outcome will be you know what I'm saying I don't know how that's going to play out. So I'm not going to pass judgment and condemn someone to hell. I'm just not going to do that. Now, it may well be, it may, whatever. You know, I've done more research than you have, brother. But I'm still reserving hope. Hope for them. If they come to their senses and not line up in the next shot line and get the booster that boosted the booster... So I'm not, you know, I'm not condemning them. I'm just not going that because God has not revealed that to me. I don't know who Antichrist is. I don't know. The, I mean, none of that stuff has happened yet. So you have to be careful. Don't weaponize your belief. What are they supposed to do? Be doomed or feel doomed? I know somebody, well, they shouldn't have taken it. Well, a lot of stuff you should have done. But the grace and mercy of God saved your life, so you ought to be praying for them. I pray for them until they take the, the 14th booster. Because there's going to be 14, I promise you. That's the plan. It's an incremental thing. I talked about it in Destination Entropy. They're building something in people's bodies. But we do not conform, so we got to make sure our temperament is godly. We are not weaponizing our beliefs because of our own deficits and personal failures. Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. This is how you prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect. By your mind being renewed. So we don't think like the world and we don't think like we're condemning people. Now, I'm not getting a shot. Ever. That's me. I'll never get it. Okay? But I'm not condemning people that do. 
I just can't condemn a human being. It's not time for that. That's not our job. You let the wrath of God be poured out on whoever he deems necessary. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you're not God. <laughs> and man, it's so crazy. The gossipers and the slanderers and that. Man, their history is so bad. How do you open your mouth and talk about somebody? And you have a train of, of trash following you. A container. This is the hour where we will be questioned by our employers and lawmakers because of the faith we possess. The blood of Jesus and the power of our testimony will give us the strength we need to overcome those that attempt to persecute us. The blood of Jesus, look at somebody say the blood of Jesus. And our testimony. This is the time to testify. Oh, we need a religious exemption. Oh, really? That's going to be about five pages of ministry. Because that's the time to testify. They asked you for it. How about I just give you an audio recording? And um, in the book of John. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, had your boss in that going in. Oh, oh mm. no. <laughs> but the blood of Jesus and power of our testimony will give us the strength we need to overcome those that attempt to persecute us. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by what? It's always the blood of the lamb. And by what? The word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. And this is where... This, this is important. Love not your lives. You can't love your life right now. You got to love Christ more than your life right now. Because if you love your life more than Christ, they're going to make you do something that you should not have done. And that you will regret. But if you love Christ more than your life, it doesn't really matter what they bring. Amen. Matthew 10 and 19. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Ooh! Dr. Young, this is, this, is, this is good to me. For it shall be given you in that same hour what, what ye shall speak. I don't want it to be me and what I think I know. The older I get, the harder it is to remember stuff. So I don't need to be dependent upon my memory. I need the power of God to supernaturally speak through me. So I can give an answer in that moment. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. What do I tell them? What do I say? Let the Holy Ghost speak through you. Jesus told us that when they deliver us up, we should depend on the Holy Ghost to give us what to say and how to respond. That This action requires us to decrease our own resolve so that we can be poised to hear and recite what is given to us. Decrease. Look at somebody and say decrease. decrease. Can you decrease? John said, John the Baptist, he must increase, but I must do what? Decrease. decrease. Can you decrease in that moment? Not think about yourselves. Not think about your bills. People tell me all the time, man, I think I'm going to just go ahead and get the shot because I got these bills and we don't know what we're going to do. And we have to trust God. You have to trust God, but you have to be poised to hear him. That means you have to decrease. Isn't it funny how all of your lifelong hopes and dreams are now teetering? It's not that important anymore. 
Man, it's not that important when it comes down to water and food. That'll change everything. Amen. Me and Jay, uh, not Jay Brian, Jay Matt, we were, we were riding our bikes in the, on the bike trail, and there's this guy who, I guess he lives there. He had a tent and had his stuff all out, clothes on the clothesline and all on, on the trail. And I was riding by, <laughs> and I told Jay, I was going to make fun of him, but that might be all of us. <laughs> so I might need to go get the measurements of that tent. We might not. We out there killing animals <laughs> and eating them. <laughs> we don't know. We might have all the Christians in concentration camps. And if that's where the remnant is going to be, I'm going to be right in there. Get my tent ready. Get my tent ready. I'm going to be with the remnant. I'm holding out till Jesus comes. Whatever comes. Somebody can't even raise their hand. Well, you know, <laughs> I think I'm going to go to the prosperity preaching church because you're talking, no, 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 no. I'm prepared for whatever happens because my faith is not in this world. My faith is in Jesus Christ. It's always been there. He found me jobs when nobody would hire me. He found me money when no one would bless me. He's been taking care of me since day one. Why would I turn my back on him? Because it's 2021. He's the same God. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. This is the God that fed the children of Israel. Rain manna down from heaven. This is the God that had Moses strike a rock to get water for people to drink. You put me on that bike trail in a tent, boy, I'm gonna have a coldest tat. Food gonna keep coming to me. Man, why do I, where all these chickens keep coming from? Well, you have no idea. I serve the God that made all the chicken. Somebody said he really is hungry because he said chicken eight times in 15 minutes. Many today have such a pre-programmed disposition that it makes it difficult for the Spirit of God to lead them. In the hour of questioning, they respond based on their own knowledge and character. So you're so used to being a Christian that you have your Christian script ready. And the Holy Spirit wants to supernaturally work through you and speak through you in this hour. This hour is different from the other hours, just in case you didn't know. So in this hour, you're going to need that boost from the Holy Ghost. You're going to need a power from on high in this hour. Your testimony script is not going to work. They love being here. They love my life. They love waking me up in the morning, clothed in my right mind, ask y'all to pray for me. Amen. Yeah. Or kneeling on the side of the bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. Praise the Lord, because the keep I died for a Praise the Lord, I'm I man, Jesus will. No, 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 no. Not in 2020. What? A demon is talking right with you, mocking you, repeating your words. You got to have power in 2021. When the world starts doing this crazy stuff, it's going to take the power of God to manifest to get us through it through the Bible read that's why it's so important to read you'll read all the stories God supernaturally saved his people yeah. how can darkness come upon all the Egyptians and the children of Israel still have light yeah. so we must deny ourselves and allow God to speak through us as completely surrendered vessels. This means that your ambition has to die. We're going through all of this stuff now so your ambition will die and won't get in your way of seeing Jesus when he returns. That's it. He's getting us ready. 
Old folks used to say, my Lord's getting us ready for what? For that great day. Who shall be able to stand? So he's checking your ambition. Check it out the door. Will you be able to stand? 2 Timothy 2 and 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. And prepared unto what? Purge himself. Look at somebody and say, purge yourself. yourself. Don't be waiting. Oh God, I need somebody to pray and get this demon out of me. Purge yourself. Purge yourself. Hey, when people just come to me with these weird request brother can you lay hands on me because i just keep watching pornography and I, I i feel like i got a demon of pornography i said no get rid of your computer yeah. um well you know i uh, <laughs> turn it off at a certain time of day oh stop watching it <laughs> what are we talking about you ain't watching it right now when you're talking to me are you thinking about it right now well no Record this thought process right here and play it back later. See, people don't want, they don't want the discipline. They don't want to purge themselves, meaning they don't want to give up certain things. You got to give up certain things. Every time I give it up, it come right back. I guarantee you there's a doorway. And if you pray to God the Father, he'll show you what that doorway is. Maybe it's certain people you're going around. Maybe it's certain movies you are saying are okay because they're PG-13. You can't handle the innuendo. It leads you right back. Maybe it's music. We don't even want to go there. Do, we, do, we, do I need to preach the truth about hip-hop? Do I need to, Christina? What the, no, it's something. He said, he wouldn't have said purge the man to purge himself if it wasn't possible. It's possible for you to purge yourself. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. They want to. Uh, they want to line and me lay hands on folks and tire me out, and then you go right back, and that doorway is waiting on you. You need to take care of that door, bro. Sis, whatever. This is the final stand of God's church. Y'all believe that? That's why many of them are closed. They couldn't stand. Couldn't stand. Why are you in there having church like that? Just close it down. Sell the building. You waiting on things to change? But this is the final stand of God's church. So we must stand strong in this hour and follow the directives he has given us. No matter how much they conflict with what the world is doing. Thank you. Andre, boy, I tell you. He is the clapper. That's his new nickname. <laughs> Lights just start coming on. John 15 and 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, what? <laughs> Matthew 10 and 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Children are going to tell on their parents. He don't have the mark. My parents don't have the mark. Come in and get them. Whatever it is, whatever the mark or whatever it is going to be. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that what? Endureth until the end shall what? I don't mind being hated for the sake of Christ because it's Christ who I'm going to spend eternity with. So I don't mind my temporary existence consistent of folks hating on me if I'm going to be in glory forever. Dissension and discard are the tools that the enemy loves to use because of what? Their effectiveness in dividing and conquering. Dissension and discord. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all do what? Man, the elder preached this last week. That all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you. 
church? That's who he's talking to. But that ye be perfectly what? Joined together. How? In the what? Same mind and in what? The same judgment. You all feel the same way. It's a blessing to be here. I promise you that. This pandemic was not only designed for population control and gene therapy, but also to turn people against each other so they will not stand together. That's why they kicked it all off with the ritual with Antifa and BLM. That was a ritual. I talked about that in part 13. Y'all can, if you haven't seen that, but that, that was the ritual that started all of this division, caused a racial war. But the Bible forewarned of families being divided and hating one another in this time. Oh, you can't go home to see Big Mama without a mask, a shield, and a whole suit of armor. She's not gonna talk to you till you look like a stormtrooper. Don't you come in here. You can wave, you can ride by and wave. But don't you come, don't come in the yard. Dodging while you talking to <clears throat> Hey, big mama. <laughs> but got a pot of hog moths cooking on the stove. <laughs> well, why ain't you dogging the mo- dodging the moths? <laughs> a whole pig sitting on the stove. Knows everything. Snap just out the pot. You balling a whole pig. But you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> I don't understand. Y'all can come by, but don't get out the car. Yeah. Turn family against each other. Family reunion on Zoom. Everybody drinking Big Red <laughs> on Zoom. This just don't feel right. I mean, this is crazy. Cancel it. Just cancel it. Cancel everything. Cancel life. Because you crazy. <laughs> Watching TV and just afraid because of TV. Man, we've been in here 600 now, close to seven strong for a whole year and some change and not one person not one person has died of COVID-19 if it was that dangerous if it was that deadly if I needed 15 boosters to save me from it we would have saw something in here we've been high-fiving Adam and Believer songing Partying. <laughs> Folks scared of this. They're scared of it. Oh, I don't want to preach the summary too early. Let me let me finish. Matthew 20. Uh, the Bible forewarned at this time. Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and then they shall hate one another yeah when they find out the truth about all of this stuff they're injecting in themselves they're going to really hate the ones that didn't do it because they're going to hate that they did it you see what I'm saying in order to be saved we must endure to the end so we have to continue to stand no matter what others are doing or what the world is trying to do to us. We must protect our spirits from all genetic alterations. But approach our stance with prayer for those that are against us. When did you stop praying for your enemies? You don't condemn them to hell. You pray for them. Matthew 5 and 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. (laughs) 
That's our end time posture. Let them say it. Let them do it. But you pray for them. Summary. It's a long summary, so be patient. It's going to make a lot of sense. We are living in a difficult time. It's harder to pastor and lead people today than it's ever been. A lot of these pastors close their churches because they're tired of people. This is the most unruly, want to do whatever they want to do generation we've seen yet. Young folks had one dream and they think God has called them to lead you. So it's hard to pastor these folks. We are seeing those that profess Christ fold like lawn chairs daily. They're giving up on God's way because of fear and doubt that has always been there, but buried deep under a religious form of godliness. See, the religious form of godliness don't work when the test come. Yeah. Yeah, they bring that vax and the, you, you, the, the organ and the bumping and the shouting and diving in the drums. That's not going to work, bro. You got to make a decision. <laughs> People believe just enough to go to church or to pray when they needed something. They believed enough to wear their godliness outwardly, but inwardly they doubt it. When they prayed for healing, they didn't get it. When they prayed for a healthy marriage or children to be delivered, it didn't happen. When they prayed for God to elevate them, they were never promoted or even considered. So many of these church people were like children kneeling on the side of the bed asking God for the things they wanted without taking notice of their behaviors and motives. They carried hatred towards someone in their hearts. And all they wanted from God was to prove something to someone else. Amen. Or they prayed for healing in their body, but their own eating and sleeping habits led to the sickness that they carry. Amen. Even malice and unforgiveness in their hearts led to autoimmune diseases that plagued their bodies and nullified the healing promise of God. Some that prayed for healthy marriages were praying, but not willing to take wrongs, submit, or forgive past indiscretions that happened in their relationship. Or they prayed for God to deliver their children, but did not train them up in the way that they should go, but instead focused too much on themselves and their own passions and desires. These inconsistencies have led to a doubtful, fearful, weak, and easily deceived group of church folks that the world mocks and bullies. The world sees them as dogs with no teeth. Barking, dancing, shouting, and gathering, wearing masks, social distancing from one another, and fully bought in to the New World Order agenda. No discernment, no wisdom from above, and definitely no courage to stand with one another. Why are we so afraid of dying? Why are we so afraid of losing our jobs or not having money? Why are we as believers in the Most High God afraid of the future? If we are in Christ, we are his future. He has planned everything around it, rescuing us in the face of persecution. He is planning the greatest avenging feat in the history of mankind. So in lieu of this, we must be confident but prudent. We must have courage but also be calculated. We must speak with the unction of the Holy Ghost and not with our emotions. This is God's time to shine through us. So we must indeed be the light in this dark time. Repent and pray for a godly posture in this last hour. Matthew 10 and 28. Jesus said, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Look at somebody and say, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows so far farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. You know how numbered the hairs of your head are? I could take one strand of your hair, run a test on it, and tell you everything that's going on in your body. Yeah. 
That's how great God is. <laughs> but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven heaven everyone stand to your feet power to stand supernatural power we need it and I'm gonna pray for you and I believe God is gonna grant it to you and he's gonna fill you with what to say what to tell them and anybody else that has a question about why you're making the decisions you're making in this hour. If you want prayer for that, I'm going to ask you to just come up and we're going to believe God for power. Power to stand. This is the time to stand. This is the time to stand. Love the disposition so many of the brothers in here they've come to me just it's been so encouraging one brother in here he's a doctor he don't mind me telling you well marco and he had to do his religious exemption thing and he didn't know about it he was like well i don't know but he said man i'm ready to walk either way a doctor so i'm ready to walk then he went crazy and start uploading all kind of information and stuff on the internet. I, I was about to call you, Bargo, and be like, all right, son, that's enough. <laughs> but he believed God, and they granted him his religious exemption. But he believed God. There was no doubt in him. No doubt. And that's how we all have to be. We, and we can't do it on our own. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to supernaturally give us that confidence. Where we can stand no matter what the people around us are doing or saying. I want power to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we come before you in this hour. Father, believing that this message was from you. It was what we needed. Believing, Father God, that you brought us all here to hear it. And that it is pivotal. In the next stage of our existence Lord we just thank you God for loving us enough to encourage us thank you Lord for loving us enough to give us a word in this hour your power is still here you are still here there is no way father God that the new world order and these other elites and all of them there's no way they can do the things that they're planning with your power here so as long as your power is here, Father God, we're going to trust in it. And as long as your power is here, God, we want it. We want to operate through it, through the person of the Holy Ghost. Let him lead us and guide us and speak to us. In the hour when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to write, when we don't know what to do. Supernaturally, speak to us, use us, and we surrender to it right now come on everyone just lift your hands as a symbol of surrender god we surrender right now we surrender our will we surrender our resolve what we want the things we once wanted the things we once hoped for we surrender everything to you so that we can be worthy vessels for you to operate through speak through us lord walk through us talk through us lead us and guide us god in this hour and we rebuke the spirit of fear right now God by your power you said perfect love cast out fear so we come to the God that is love so that fear will not grip us and God we trust you for this we believe in you for this this is not a formality this is how we feel about you God we're not here because it's church we're here because you're you and we thank you Lord thank you Lord now I pray that you feel everyone God 
fill us all with your Holy Ghost in this hour fill us all so we'll know you are with us God fill us all strengthen our belief help our unbelief strengthen our faith God walk with us be with us and we'll give you the praise and we will represent you well in this hour in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray thank you Lord thank you Lord amen hallelujah hallelujah don't move until he says move don't write until he gives you what to write don't speak until he tells you what to speak wait on him they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength shall mount up with wings as an eagle hallelujah hallelujah come on hug somebody and say I'm filled with the Holy Ghost I'm filled with the Holy Ghost I'm filled with the Holy Ghost hallelujah 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 no more fear no more doubt no disbelief because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost if you're filled with the Holy Ghost you're filled with the answer so no need of worrying about the question I'm filled with the answer I'm filled with everything I need hallelujah 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 you keep speaking it when you doubt say nope I'm filled with the Holy Ghost when unbelief comes you say nope I'm filled with the Holy Ghost when the tempter comes say no I'm filled with the Holy Ghost I'm filled with Holy Ghost power